Hi, I'm Mark Cristiano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. On today's economy show, we have a lot to cover, a lot of new data points that have come out. We're going to start off with uh, what's happening with Israel and Gaza. Uh, what are some of the implications for that? You know, it's it's that's more regional, but there's a a bigger feel that that it bleeds into uh, Iran and, and those different capacities. Then we're going to look at emerging market inflation and some of the issues with growth that we're continuing to see. Then we're going to turn over and in the second segment, we're going to look to U.S. inflation blowing past estimates because uh, if you've, unless you've been living under a rock, we have been talking about inflation for over a year now. You know, one of the things, that, you know, three of the things that we said at the essentially April of last year was three for three pieces. One, U.S. employment was going to disappoint and be very difficult to get back to normal. Wage compression was, and just wage in inflation was going to be very difficult to see because of the lack of employment and wage compression and wages weren't going to keep pace. And then the third was inflation was going to go parabolic. And now, what is parabolic? That's obviously we use some colorful language. You know, it's it's just going to continue to grind higher. And that, these are things that we're going to catch up in uh, segment two. Then in the third segment, we're going to talk about why are jobs disappointing? Because this is some of those things that we've been talking about. But why is this the case? And then in the third and the fourth segment, we're going to go through European data. You know, what it, what has improved overall? Because you know we've seen some positive moves. And then we're going to wrap up with uh, with Asia, looking at you know obviously all of Asia, Indian um, India's uh, inflation, but then also the tightening Chinese uh, uh, monetary policy because I think there's a lot to go through in those levels. So, just to kick off uh, segment one, just want to look at you know what is where is Gaza? Where is the West Bank? You know, what does this really look like? And and here you can see that we've continued to have rocket attacks coming from Gaza into Israel. And Israel has the Iron Dome, which we all know about. The, in, ahead of some of these attacks, uh, additional Iron Dome batteries were moved into position just because there was a lot of friction in Gaza prior to these these issues that have been going on in general and we'll break them down uh, you know and try to be as fair as possible because you know anybody who's been mar- who's who's married has been married you know there's 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 what he said there's what she said and then there's what actually happened and this is going to be something similar there's always going to be two sides to every story you know maybe some are more right than others but there is pressure that has been mounting in Gaza in terms of uh, the pushback against the Israelis. You know, Israel has been, or at least more of the hardline uh, Jewish community, have been looking to increase settlements, pushing out some of the uh, Palestinians. But we have to look at this in terms of who were their players, who were the key players in the region. And Iran has been a big uh, supporter of those in Gaza, those in the West Bank, especially the Hamas and the PIJ. And it's important to uh, appreciate that Iran is under significant pressure. You know, they, they have been facing a big uprising in their own country. Uh, they're losing support in Iraq. And we'll talk about you know the riots that have happening and the burning down of an Iranian consulate, just because th- there's a big push right now, and they're still trying to stay relevant. And this is one of the easiest ways to stay relevant and to try to show that they're a force to be reckoned with. And this is, uh, again, but they're using a lot of these individuals, unfortunately, as pawns. And there's a lot of things at stake, like the um, Israel just had to shut down one of their gas facilities because uh, the Hamas had... Uh, had attacked that facility or attempted to attack that facility. And this is now getting bigger because this gas goes into Israel, it goes into Jordan, it goes into Egypt, it goes into other areas. So this is where there are a lot of individuals that are going to be very adamant about them coming to some sort of agreement. So I don't think there's going to be I don't think this becomes a, a bigger war, but again, there's there's going to be a lot of conflict coming forward. And this is where things really kicked off. So this is looking at the key holy sites because there's um, there are three 
very big uh, holy sites within the Muslim uh, community. There's obviously Mecca, Medina, and then Al Al Aqsa uh, Mosque. So the Al Aqsa, because as everyone knows, it's Ramadan, and now Ramadan is coming to an end. So there was a lot happening at this uh, at this area, and th- during this period, the uh, those that were worshiping started to throw rocks, throw uh, and and protest against the police that were present. The police then turned around and shut uh, streets down, shut things down, and broke up some of the prayer under the guise of COVID restrictions, all of these other things. So now we have a friction point that is already there. This then comes to a much bigger friction point. So this all started on Monday. Palestinians hurled rocks, other heavy objects. Uh, Israel, uh, Israeli police stormed the mosque, uh, firing stun guns and rubber bullets. Hundreds of Palestinians were wounded and dozens were hospitalized. And this kind of violence has been going on daily since the start of Ramadan on April 13th. So again, this is not new. This is, this is just because you're, you're going to go to this mosque because it's Ramadan, high holy days. You're going to go there, and, and this is where the friction content, continued to, to mount, which is why... Israel did move in um, assets ahead of the barrage of missiles, the, uh, the rockets. These were the different components. So this is the worst violence in years between Israeli police and Palestinians in East Jerusalem. In April, Israeli police uh, you know, blocked off access to part of the old city, giving COVID restrictions. So when you look at just you know, everybody uh, accounts to this is the, the main place of worship from the Christian side, from the Armenian side, Jewish side, Muslim side. So you can see this is where everybody interacts, which obviously is going to have a friction point. So now when, you, when we look at Hamas launched the rocket attacks after a 6 p.m. deadline passed for an ultimatum that demanded the Israeli police withdrew from the Al-Aqsa Mosque in East Jerusalem, Hamas also demanded the release of all detained Palestinians and the removal of Jewish settlers from an East Jerusalem neighborhood. Now, we know the settlers aren't going anywhere. That has always been an issue of, of pause. Yo, but the the mosque, so we, we knew there was going to be something in general that was going to happen, and here we are. So when you a new round, a new barrage of missiles, uh, of rockets just happened, and just to be clear, rocket is something that is launched but does not have intelligent connection to it. It's just a rocket in general. Missile is something that has something more intelligent in terms of guidance systems. So that's the difference. They're, they're not interchangeable in this in this category. So now when we look at what has happened going forward, now we have an impact to natural gas, we have an impact to gas in general, and we have another rocket launch. So there was 350 rockets launched from Gaza in under 20 minutes last night, early, early there morning. And now that we're up to a fourth barrage of, miss, of uh, rockets. Now this is a problem because the Iron Dome only has so many missiles. And that's where they've uh, is israel has started to move assets into position and it is very likely that we will see a ground offensive to take out specific assets they've already taken down multiple buildings that are deemed a stronghold offices you know arms depots to try to eliminate where these rockets are are originating from so this is just they're they're going to need to use more forces on the ground to solidify this which is why this is not over yet this will get uh, bloodier which is unfortunate but again these are things that are happening in general but what are some of the bigger issues at at large so pressure is mounting on on Iran riots and and the uh, in a Iranian consulate burned in Karbala uh, and is and uh, in Karbala and as Israel has continued to take out Syrian uh, Iranian backed Syrian assets so the response the PIJ rockets into Israel as the IDF strikes at strategic assets Israel started moving iron dome batteries ahead of that but let's think about what happened in Karbala so the, they attempted to burn down the Iranian consulate Right now, angry per- protesters burn pictures of Solomon, which we all know about Solomon, and the Iranian guide on the streets of uh, of uh, of Karbala, Iran's uh, consulate, then was burnt down. And there's a lot of symbolism behind this because the, every time the, the we, we continue to see this is the 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 pressure point that is mounting. And again, the, the, it all comes back to it. Now, let's take this to a different level. Uh, the USS Squall. 
uh, fired twice at an IRGC fast moving boat because it was approaching one of our uh, assets that was in the region during a transit of the Strait of Hormuz. On May 10th, during the interaction, the high-speed boat came within 150 yards of our vessel and was unnecessarily close, which is why we fired shots. So there's pressure. It's just where the flashpoints remain is one of the most friction What ones right now is in Israel versus some of the proxies of Iran, which is where we continue to see these these friction points that are not going away. And, but again, we, we, we're going to keep talking about it because there is, um, there is the ability for this to spread. Everyone is calling for cooler heads to prevail. We're actually getting more support for Israel from the region than we have in any previous year. So again, it's also showing that there's lose, they're, they're losing more support within that region. And again, just friction as we keep talking about the Shia Crescent. What does that mean? We've we've done several uh, videos on it. We've done uh, several reports on it. Iran is is continuing to come under pressure. <laughs>